There you are, welcome back. We're talking walkers and Fernando Jerez. Uh, wonderful human right now on Twitter. He's doing a lot of generative design things and it's it's kind of cool. But but his his start for me was when he made the trash walker. This one right here, this trash walker. And I, I've done videos on this and it's probably one of my favorite designs ever just because it's it's cool and of course you know i had to make it bigger it's so so good i love these designs absolutely adore these designs these have been out for years and i hope you guys out there you and yours have had a chance to print these because they're just wonderful you could store candy you could store trash you could store desiccant packs you could put popcorn in here really the possibilities are endless. Now though, Fernando has gone out and done something amazing. Truly amazing. He's come out with the Spool Walker. Available at printables, this takes the concept of a thing with mechanical legs and something in the middle, but that something in the middle, supported by the legs on either side, are spools of filament. And it actually has this cabin that goes around it. And it just, it ticks all of the boxes for me every single one of them. And so of course, I have to print this. Do it. This is truly amazing. And so I think I'm gonna, what's that? What's that? My, oh, my multimeter's ringing. Hello? Yes, this is Joel. Oh, hi Anchor Make. Yeah, you've got that M5 out, right? Yeah. Ah, looks like a fun machine. Yeah. Well, you heard about my, my dilemma, needing a machine to print this spool walker. Yeah, yeah Fernando's wonderful and he creates some crazy yeah. mo- What? Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, you're up for it? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be good. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Love you too. Well, there we go. Anchor Make is sponsoring this project with their M5 3D printer and some filament. First things first, we gotta get the machine out of the box. Well, the Anchor Make M5 was actually packaged well in the box. All the parts came out and I was able to practice my DJ impression. The top goes on with wires going through the bottom, but they tell you to do it in an interesting way. They want you to prop things up on foam and do it that way. Cables on the bottom go into specific ports. It really wasn't hard to figure out. And then once those are plugged in, the plate that covers it just goes back on. And from there, things are set back up into place, plugged in, and you know, we do have to start a first print. But wait, that screen needs the cover to come off. Once the printer booted up and I was able to select a print, I connected it to my phone and my Wi-Fi so you can actually track what it's doing on your mobile device. It goes through a leveling process and a calibration process. And then once you add the filament in, you're kind of ready to go. So I started a print, a Benchy, and it said it was gonna take 18 minutes, an 18 minute Benchy. And at the end, I had an 18 minute Benchy. I held it in my hands and I was like, okay, Anchor Make, good job on that Benchy. I think this is gonna work out great for my Spool Walker project. Here it is, the Benchy that I printed and at 18 minutes, really, that's not that bad. Looks like a Benchy, things are smooth. I'm excited for this print project. Now to show you the machine. <sighs> this is the Anchor Make M5. It's 235 on X, 235 on Y, and 250 on Z or Z. It has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle going up to 260 C, and that bed will take you to 100 C. Some of the cool stuff about this machine, uh, it's got AI in it to help detect print failures. It's got a hub that lets you connect other devices automatically records time lapses, seven by seven automatic bed leveling. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the speed. This, at time of filming, 500 millimeters per second print speed. With any project that you care about, you wanna track it. So I did create a spreadsheet. Of course I did. There are 19 pieces in total to print for this. And with print settings of three perimeters and 10% infill, we're looking at just shy of two kilograms in total of material. And uh, using the fast print speed, it looks like those parts 
one right after the other. Combined time in printing, if I did this right, 51 hours. Later. All of the pieces fit into these two grocery bags. And as I get these out, I want you to have a look at the time lapses that were recorded because they were automatically generated by the machine. We had this printing in the garage. Every once in a while you'll see the garage door go up and down, but all of these parts printed on this machine and automatically time lapsed. There you have it. Filaments provided by Anchor Make as well. I've got blue PLA, gray PLA, red PLA, and white PLA. Now, this part of the model, if you look on the model page on printables, these are the quote unquote glass pieces. And while obviously you can't see me and I can't see you, I still think using white is interesting because it has a semi translucence to it because it's very, very thin in these parts. I did print these. Let's see, these and this with a brim, because if that's all that's touching the bed, you don't want it to wobble off. So I was just trying to give it a little bit of extra hold. And of course, you just need one of these tools, a deburring tool, and you can take the brims off, which I will do. 51 hours of 3D printing, all automatically time-lapsed, all sent through a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on this machine, incredibly quick. Just, I mean, look at the, look at the parts, like that's, that's big. That's a big part. These were a joy to print. Uh, these are the feet and they just all kind of work into each other. I think now what I should do is get rid of the brims, take a sip of water because I'm thirsty, and then assemble the spool walker. I am, I am more excited than words can express. Let's do this. I think I can put it together and I don't think I need the instructions and I hope, I hope those aren't famous last words. It's a nice tight fit. Do, 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 do. So now, if you don't have the other accoutrement, you can just put that there, put that there, and hold yourself a spool. Like, it would work. It would totally work. And it would be glorious. However, we have a cabin to put together, and I don't want to skip that. Look at that! Oh, I love it. I love it so much! It's glorious. It's so good. Look at that. It just marches up to a 3D printer. Do, 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 do. For this, I've got the white unloaded. I think what I'm gonna do is print in blue because, come on. Let's see how loading goes. So I'll lift this up and it stays up. Here's the bar. And it looks like the, uh, uh, the stress on the plastic is causing it to bend inward just a little bit. So I think I can put it through right there and it spins. I thought maybe I'd have to put some anti-skid feet on this thing, but I don't think I need to. Uh, I did realize the error in my ways and I didn't load the filament out from here anymore. I loaded it out from down here, which is where it's supposed to be. Don't put it through there, put it through there. But it's loaded up. Machine has the latest firmware, which I just found out was out. And now I can print something. It's a gorilla phone stand. What? Printing now. During this part, it actually taps the nozzle on left and right sides of the bed, just to make sure that it's level across the bed. This is a part of the purge process right here, just to make sure the nozzle's ready. Once it moves into position, it starts printing the model and the countdown goes down. You can see above the time, there's an AI with kind of a green circle. This means that it's gonna use its AI to inspect a layer. I think it's the first few layers that it does this. It kind of, it brings the head up and then it utilizes the camera and its AI functionality to inspect the layer just to make sure things are good. And then it continues with the print. You'll see. Have a look at that first layer right there. It looks fantastic. It's very glassy and even, and it did a really good job doing that first layer calibration and that leveling routine. I'm really happy I'm seeing this. Here we go. 
It's now raising up. It's analyzing the bottom layer. It's utilizing AI and the camera, which is right here. Comes back down. Does a little loopy because it wants to reprime the nozzle. And there we go. We are off to the races. Look at that. The print is done. It is a gorilla phone stand uh, because gorillas obviously historically have been known to hold phones the best of the animal kingdom, I believe. One way to test that out is to uh, take my phone and put it here. A success. We have a success. And with that, I guess this marks the end. Listen, this was fantastic. I want to just give a huge thanks to Anchor Make for making this possible because this, oh, this is, this is cool. Just look at it. Just, just look at it. It's so awesome. And you get to put all sorts of things in the back, like the thing that cuts you or the benchy. All the other tools can fit back there. And then I believe it can come off if you just need to dump them out. <laughs> this is too much fun. Please print this. Fernando Yerez, you are a master. Please, please, please go print this. Remember, it's just under two kilograms worth of material in total for all the pieces that you see and just shy of 51 hours. Yeah, and you too can get yourself a Gorilla phone stand if you get yourself an Anchor Make M5. I'll put links in the description for all of these wonderful things there. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in. Spool walk all the things. And as always, high five.